So hello and welcome to geology. So we have granite, mica, no, nah, that's not mica, that's schist. Here we have mica, oh sorry, wrong channel. So this is the banknote channel. And uh, my name is Glenn, uh, sorry to confuse you. So we're going to look at some banknotes that are recently purchased and I'll probably resell these on my website. So uh, most of them are from Germany and the first one we have is a pretty okay condition. This is a uh, very fine, it's quite dirty and it's a banknote from Germany issued by the Americans and the Russians. So it's a, it's a military currency which you know, a lot of countries do issue after they've defeated a nation. Uh, we have the Geneva Convention in which uh, you're not allowed to issue these type of banknotes anymore. If you take over, like if you take over Finland, uh, you need to issue the banknotes that they were uh, issuing. And for the most part, that's what Germany did, except for in Russia, which they issued banknotes for Ukraine and ever Reichsmark banknotes they issued for the rest of uh, the occupied territories. But most of the other places, like Serbia, Croatia, uh, but. Bohemian Moravia, which is currently Czech Republic, uh, they issued uh, uh, individual banknotes. And if you look up here, you have a little J. So that indicates it is uh, the United States issue. Now the Russian issue didn't have the imprint. It's the only way you can tell. So these have eight or nine digits. And... The only one that's harder to get is the eight digits with um, the little F there. So this one, so you count, so three, six, nine digits. And I see on Numister the nine digits, the eight digits, it's the most common. Nine digits is not really that hard to get. And most of them are, are seems to be Russian issues. So Russians just printed the hell out of these. Which caused this currency, as well as the currency that the Germans issued themselves, to be quite worthless. And these, this design is based on the United States currency. So the Russians just adopted it. I doubt that the Russians would have put that much emphasis on currency. But they did issue, the Russians did issue uh, military currency, I think for Hungary and Czechoslovakia. And they were just preliminary notes because those countries also issued their own bank notes uh, with different designs. So this was a confusing time. Lots of different bank notes for the same currency. So yeah, that one's probably worth about $10, $20. Yeah, quite a nice bank note. Okay, then uh, oh, we'll keep on with the German bank notes. What we have here is Albrecht Dürer. Or, well, it is a German banknote, but it is a zwei Millionen mark, so two million mark from 1923. So this is an inflationary issue, and it's pretty much extremely fine, and extremely fine because it has one cent to fold. I don't see too much damage on it, and obviously you don't touch it too much. Uh, but a lot of people do touch it like I have. And some people have said that, you know, if you touch a banknote, it's uncirculated. Now, uncirculated in banknote collecting is uh, a condition of the actual uh, banknote itself. So I need to look up uh, who is on this banknote. So, you know, you look up Numista or uh, other catalogs and uh, they do have it. But the interesting thing is that this is a two-sided banknote. Uh, a lot of banknotes at this time started to be single-sided. So we have a prefix E, and we have the uh, the six numbers. So if you look at a lot of the banknotes, you can see a lot of them are just uh, one-sided. Uh, some of them are still two-sided. And we're looking at this banknote here. So it's 160 by 88 millimeters. 2 million mark and here they have a picture of the the watermark which is on this, this side here 
Actually, it's all the way through the banknote. And, well, they do have an error in the way they pronounce or spell million. But it doesn't give any information on who is actually on this banknote. And I think this is a merchant painted by Abrek Dua. And uh, this one's probably worth, because of the high condition, probably 20 to $30. So... But this banknote is one of the harder issues to get for the German hyperinflationary, especially in this high grade banknote that you can see here. Okay, now the third banknote is actually quite large. Uh, if I, I get a $20 out of my uh, wallet, maybe I should check these as well to see if any of them are good. Right. So $20 banknote. And as you can see, the size of it is uh, quite different. And we're looking at the signatures. No, they're both big and small. What we need is uh, two big signatures. The serial numbers. Yeah. Two million. And 800,000. Yeah, not really worth, worth $20. But this is a banknote that was issued... Uh, so it is a 1,000 Korun, yeah, 1,000, uh, and this was issued in uh, 1945. It's not dated, but in 1945, 41,000, as you can see, they issued, they pretty much, this is what I was talking about in another video confusion at the end of world war ii so this is a russian banknote issued by the russians also issued 1945 dated 1944 they issued this one so this was i think printed in the uk then there was another one issued 1945 and they also had a provisional issue uh printed on a previous banknote so if we so this was the uh, Slovenian bank, no, Slovakian banknote. Got Slovenia, Slovakia, wish they'd actually get their names right. So these are high value banknotes. So they are a bit harder to get. And here it's got $33. Uh, but as you can see, this one's graded 66. So looks like a, a specimen banknote. And... No, so this one you're probably paying eh, probably at least fifty to to a hundred dollars on. And what is on this banknote? Doesn't it obviously it hasn't been uh I don't know, I haven't researched this banknote, so I need to look it up. Obviously it's a famous castle, probably around Prague or somewhere, I would say. If anyone knows, please leave a comment down below. But I'll find out sooner or later. On this side we have the guy's name, Jus Podrad, and he's probably a king of Bohemia at one time or another. And the watermark is a woman. So, yeah, that's a nice 1945 banger, and I think these are a, a bit hard to get. So I'm not too sure if I'm going to keep this one, or if I'll just uh, whack it onto uh, my website. Then we have, well, one of my, no, I think this is my second, um, second uh, marker from Finland, or the second currency, as the president, Paskivi, and this replaced the first marker, which was a 1000 marker banknote, and we have the coat of arms behind his head, so this is a nice design banknote. And in 1990, they did replace this with a coin, and then they issued a 20 marker to uh, make up for the loss of this denomination. So it's 1963, and there's a whole different signature series for uh, this banknote. This is Lit A, you also get ones without that. And on the back, we just have the coat of arms. And these ones are probably worth about uh, 10 to $20 in themselves. So, nice banknote. And the last one we have is a Polish banknote. So this is uh, the mark of the Polish Republic. 
So if we look at Numistar, we can see the smallest value they issued was a half mark. And then we got two different issues. So we've got the ones issued by the German Austrian uh, government. And the interesting thing is that the Austrians, they did have a substantial Polish population. And they're the ones that ran the Austrian occupied Russian theatre. And uh, as you can see, there's three different types of uh, one mark issues for, and this is the standard one, but the inflated currency, as you can see, the 10 mark, we only have two different issues, so the 1919, and if we look at the actual denomination, so these were replaced by the Zloty in uh, 1919. 24 and here we have some values obviously there's no print figures uh, so you can go down you can see how much people are actually selling them for uh, so these cost probably about 20 to 30 dollars and if you want to scroll and see the other denominations uh, so in 1920s they started to get hyperinflated so we went from 5 ten thousand mark 50, 100,000, 250, and the highest denomination that they issued, whoops, is uh, the 100,000 mark. Uh, but it seems to be scarce, and even the 10 million that we see, not 100,000, 100 million, 10 million seems to be quite a hard banknote to get. So, uh, what features do we have? Well, these banknotes, this one has Mr. Kosciuszko. And yes, the Australian mountain, Mount Kosciuszko, is named after this guy. He was uh, a f prominent figure in the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. And that was dismembered by Russia, Austria and Germany back in the 1700s. Here we have the Eagle of Poland. And like Germany, uh, there's no one style of Eagle well, there probably is officially on the coat of arms, but different denominations, also on the coins, they just issue different variations of the actual Polish uh, eagle, which, yeah, they probably, no, I'd say they, uh, did they adopt from the Germans at the time? The German marks didn't really have many variations, it's only in the Federal Republic of Germany, uh, the head of most, and this is all in Polish, 1919, as you can see, the months are totally different from those that we use in uh, English speaking countries, and on the back, we just have a coat of arms, and we have just a lot of uh, designs that, looks like horns, could be cornucopias, uh, so these were really, they were, they were like a rush job. So the designs that you see are all pretty much the same. And, uh, well, they circulated for about five years. But, because this is hyperinflated, uh, this probably wouldn't have been around in the 1920s, so 21, 22. Totally out of circulation. So, uh, then we got some information, probably anti counterfeiting features. So this is the prefix, and this is the suffix. So quite a nice banknote, and I don't think I've got one from Poland uh, before. Not any of these marks. Anyway, I hope this helps you with your banknote. Uh, viewing so, basically you got like 20, 40... Yeah, I'd say probably a hundred, you know, hundred and ten, probably a hundred and thirty dollars of banknotes just there. That's just my conservative guesstimate. The variation could probably be seventy to one hundred and seventy dollars. So anyway, I'd say thank you very much. Have an awesome coin and banknote collecting time. Thank you and goodbye.